Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time. Here a quick guide for the fast as f goes slim lich in Last Epoch. The main focus of this build is to run through monoliths really fast to target farm different echo rewards like uniques and exalted items and farming exile mages for experimental mods. And with that said, you are not going to be pushing high corruption with this setup, but that's not the point of this build. The main ability we are using here is Ghost Flame and it deals fire and necrotic damage around us while also draining our mana when we are channeling the skill. And for this setup we are looking to scale the initial hit of the Ghost Flame and not the ailments from it to one shot enemies as we go. To be able to deal damage and be fast at the same time we need a lot of points for the Ghost Flame skill to grab all the damage multipliers. And the great thing here is that the skill got so many tags on it, scaling from a lot of different sources like fire, necrotic, damage over time, spell, channeling and movement, and lastly intelligence. Spine of Malkros is a great item for this as we get 3 points for fire, damage over time and acolyte skills, adding up to 9 skills points in total and at the same time also providing some extra flat spell damage here. Getting damage over time prefix as a legendary potential works great here as well as it will increase both the fire and the correct damage. The build can be played with both the Lich and the Warlock but with some testing the Lich just felt like the superior choice for this current setup. Uh, the passive tree from the Lich provides so much increase to damage as well as the Ripper form where we also get over 200% increased damage to Ghost Flame with some extra move speed here and other bonuses as well. While building in the Reaper form, we basically get an extra life as we don't die when we reach zero health, but we can also use the Death Seal by being the Lich. And the Death Seal provides quite a bit of damage itself by shooting out waves of death each second while sealed, but it also works as a trigger skill for Mark of Death, which we get from the haunting passive from the reaper form skill tree and the mark of death lower all resist by 25% to the enemies for some extra damage here. The build can get over 200% move speed and we can basically stay in ghost flame all the time without having to worry that much about getting our mana drain. Which is the biggest problem to solve for this build as the channel cost gets quite high as we start to invest more points into the skill. The first thing is uh, to get a couple of large idols with mana finish the, uh, with ghost flame and this will lower the overall cost of the skill. By also using wandering spirits and picking up the infused soul passive provide a 15% chance to gain 12 mana whenever a spirit expires. And then we are also using transplant here with the pale blood passive which will uh, give us 30 flat mana when we use transplant. Telfon's Mirage is a small source as it also provides us 2 mana gain when we dodge while channeling. Potions is a huge part of this build as well and by using a belt with the experimental mod mana gain on potion use can grant us up to 40 flat mana whenever we use a potion. And while on the subject of potion it synchronizes very well with all other things we are using for this build. And one of them is a Grimoire of Necrotic Elixirs, which will give us up to 40 necrotic damage to melee attack and spells. And at the same time also take up to 40% less void necrotic and poison damage for 4 seconds on potion use. Extinguish is another item which also will grant us up to 30% attack speed, cost speed and movement speed, if we have used a potion in past 4 seconds. Elixir of Death is a crazy strong defensive passive which will provide 50% less physical damage and necrotic damage taken for 4 seconds after we use a potion. So as you can see here there are quite a bit of things happening when we used a potion recently. The build's defense is really nice as well here but we don't really have to worry about it too much as we are just doing low corruptions either way but it's worth mentioning I feel. Elixir of Death from the Lich passive, as we just mentioned, we get 50% less physical and necrotic damage taken here of the potion use, and also Grimmer of Necrotic Elixir for the extra void necrotic and poison damage taken as well here, up to 40%. And while we're channeling Ghost Flame, we also get additional dodge rating per intelligence from the Wraith form passive, 
Combining this with Telvun's Mirage Boots, which gives us even more dodge rating while channeling, making us almost dodge capped without any more investment. We also take less damage taken while channeling Ghost Flame from the Disdain passive in the Ghost Flame tree, and also from Doom Herald from the Warlock passive for additional 24% less damage and also a damage multiplier here when we are channeling. We also get Ward per second per two intelligence from the Ward of Malevolence passive from the Warlock tree and also some extra Ward per second while channeling Ghost Lamp from our idols and this however do only benefit us when we are not using Death Seal as we can't have any Ward when we use the skill. Uh, still really useful if we want to use the Death Seal when we are out of Reaper form to be able to get some fast Ward up. We're also getting some extra flat armor when we are channeling from the Blessing from Spirit of Fire and also Soul Shroud from the Reaper form passive provides some extra armor per point of intelligence. So basically as long as we are channeling we are going to be safe to go. Uh, do keep in mind that after we use Transplant there is a short delay when we are not channeling and at this time we are losing all of these defensive perks as we just recently mentioned. And the same goes for when we're using Wandering Spirit. I like to set it up as a auto cost, and basically, this will auto cost it for us whenever we use Transplant in that short window when we're not channeling Ghost Flame. And for some stats we want to focus on, it's going to be health, intelligence, flat spell damage, increased damage over time and spell damage, critical strike avoidance for the cap, move speed. And also getting plus to all resists when channeling on your relic basically solve all resist problems for this build. Also going for plus to level of ghost flame and if you can also death seal here on your helmet. And for the idols you want to pick up mana efficiency with uh, ghost flame and for the suffix you could go with either resist, health or ward retention. But also, chance to apply fear is really good here, as we also get a 75% damage multiplier from the Ghost Flame uh, passive to feared enemies. And this will help to sustain that debuff when uh, Death Seal is uh, hitting enemies. We also got two grand idols with ward per second when channeling Ghost Flame, and also with increased spell damage while on low life. And for the blessings from the Black Sun, we went with the Void Resistance. From Ending the Storm for the flat mana, we have Reign of Dragon for the critical strike avoidance, and Age of Winter for the flat spell damage here when we are channeling, and also from Spirit of Fire, some flat armor when we are channeling. And let's go over the skills here, starting with Ghost Flame. Wraith Form will grant us additional dodge rating here per intelligence when we're channeling Ghost Flame. Spectral Menace will reduce the channel cost by up to 70%. Spear of Dread gives us some extra movement speed when we are channeling and also making it a movement skill. Doom Surge for some extra movement speed. Fair Desecration makes the Ghost Flame now deal damage in a full circle instead of just in front of you, but with the increase to the channel cost. So this you can play a little bit around with if you want to use this or not. I feel it's uh, quite nicely to have, as long as you can sustain your mana. Domain of Torment for the additional damage multiplier. Disdain for some less damage taken when we're channeling the skill. Atrocity for some extra damage multiplier here. Decrepit Mortal will release uh, the Desfire's Curse on enemies after a short duration. And this curse also makes the enemy take uh, additional 15% more uh, damage over time. But also with the Banshee passive, when the Desert Mortal is triggered, they will now also fear enemies. And also Ghost Flame will deal more direct damage to feared enemies, up to 75%. Death Seal is another skill that we're using. This will seal our health preventing us from going above the current value and deal damage around us and it's also going to be usually used when we are in Reaper form. Moratorium for some increased duration. Soul stability makes the death seal prevent health loss from effects that continue to drain percentage of our current health. Quick Ender Dead will make us gain the haste buff when we release death seal. And Doom Call make the waves deal more damage here for each stack of damage on us. Mortal Pulse makes so the death waves will cost every second when we are sealed. And Tycardia will just make the waves of death shoot out more frequently. 
Desperate Shout giving us some extra armor and also stun avoidance per 10 missing health. And the lock makes it so if our health is above 33% of your maximum health, when we active Death Seal, this will reduce it to 33% of our maximum health, making us be able to stay on low life. And Reaper form, take on the mantle of death itself and transform us into the Reaper, giving us some extra bonuses while in Reaper form. Soul Shroud gave us armor per point of intelligence. We also have Vile Shroud here, which will also give us necrotic resistance and poison resist per point of intelligence. Soul for Soul for increased damage. Reaper's Curse for additional increased damage. And death comes quickly, make us able to gain the swiftness buff when we kill the enemy and these buffs will give us 1% increase movement speed and can stack up 10 times. And then also haunting here, while in Reaper form we have a chance to apply Mark of Death on enemies on hit and this is going to be triggering by using Death Seal as it counts as a hit. Wandering Spirits will make us sustain our mana but also to apply some damage and also applying fear. Infused Soul is the thing that makes us gain mana. Uh, here we get a 15% chance to gain 12 mana per spirit when they are expiring. Sheltering Spirit will give us some extra ward. And also Medium just for the extra mana efficiency for the skill. Thin Veil makes so we get more spirits. Terrifying Present makes it so enemies near spirits are now also feared. Drained Will makes it so one spirit and also shred the current resistance of nearby enemies. This help out with half of our damage from uh, Ghost Flame, as uh, the skill is both fire and necrotic base. And some extra points in Sin After Forgotten. This makes it so Wandering Spirit now also inflict enemies around them with the damned ailment. Transplant for another mobility skill, but also to gain us some mana, apply fear, and gain the bone armor buff. Pale Blood gives us 30 mana when we're using Transplant. Acid Rain makes it so when we hit an enemy with Transplant we gain mana per hit here. Eclat's Favor for the Haste and Frenzy buff of the use Transplant. Squeamish makes it so we fear on Departure. And the other one here makes it so we fear on Arrival. Flitting Form for some extra colon recovery here. Bone Armor for the Bone Armor buff here. Get some extra armor and also less damage taken. And also a positive for uh, some increased duration for the bone armor. And here a quick preview of the passive skill tree. But for more information about the build, I do recommend you go and check out Lost Epoch Build Planner. To the top of the build planner, you can also go to loot filters, where you can find my ultimate loot filter with a lot of options depending on how strict you want to be. Link for this will be in the description. So what do you think about the fast as fuck Ghost Flame Lich? Have you tried it out before or tried another version of it? Feel free to tell me in the comments below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. If you got any other questions, feel free to drop a comment and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!